the ESG money flows are, are hard ones to ignore. Um, and as a result, you've seen integration surge within teams, I think, across the market. Hello, I'm Natalie Kenway, Global Head of ESG Insight at ESG Clarity, and welcome to this special video interview on recruitment trends in the ESG space. I'm speaking to Tom Strelsek, founder of independent search firm TWS. Thank you very much for joining me, Tom. Hi, Natalie, how are you doing? How has the recruitment landscape for ESG changed since the pandemic unfolded? Yeah, I th look, I think at first um, businesses were struggling uh, to get their head around the hiring people without meeting them. And then candidates, of course, were dealing with starting a new job remotely, uh, which posed its individual challenges. But I think, look, firms have adapted and largely in most cases they've adapted quite well. I think certainly within ESG, it's been such a priority area that there's been no choice. And, and the pandemic has very much shone a light on sort of social and environmental challenges. And it's very much sharpened minds across the industry. So I think it became something that more people were talking about. And suddenly a lot of businesses realized that in order to keep up, um, it was going to be necessary to show sort of clients and investors that they had a plan. And, and whether that was around increased engagement activities or simply having a narrative in the first place, um, it, it, the last 12 months have been pretty transformational within this space. And are there any particular roles that asset managers desire the most? All of them, <laughs> to be honest with you. I, th I think look, I think it depends on which uh, firms we look at and what stage they're at in developing ESG strategies. So I think if you look at hedge funds, look, they're very much at the start of their journey um, and, and there's an increasing appetite with that. And, and if you look to, say, private equity, for example, largely the opportunity there is for businesses that can be owners of an asset outright and they feel that they can make greater impact. But I suppose if you look to larger asset managers um, and you know, not referencing any particularly, but a, a very prominent US asset manager with very much a voice in this space, that they, they have teams that are ranging up to 50 or approaching 50 globally. Um, and, and there's become this need to develop a structure where you don't have people that are wearing two or three hats at the same time. And so there's that need to specialize people into distinct areas, typically across the sort of core areas of sort of engagement, research and integration. So I would say certainly integration, um, data solutions. So, you know, increasing amounts of data, you're looking at what's relevant and what's not, and, and what data can be deemed as, as material for a company's bottom line. And then if you take in isolation, you have sort of public policy and regulation, and reporting issues, um, I think what's clear from recent developments in ESG regulation is that there's a ever-growing complexity of data and the sort of reporting requirements have created this demand for a sort of scalable data solution as a whole. And, and that's why we see data positions, um, you know, increasingly sat within responsible investment teams, whereas before perhaps they were not, they were just a common resource. And apart from the obvious, um, what, has, what has surprised you about the changes in the ESG space over the past year? I think for me, it's been the sheer day-to-day -day volume of news and developments in, in, in the sector. It's, it's been mind-boggling. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's a job in itself for a lot of people in this sector. Um, but thankfully, I think the ESG sector as a whole sort of is a good advocate for knowledge sharing, um, whether that's seminars, publications, forums, um, obviously, ESG Clarity has been very helpful in, in kind of helping with that, which has kept, you know, keep, keeping people up to speed with the changes. And I think sometimes in financial services, people can be quite cloak and dagger around what they disclose for obvious reasons. And I think the openness in how people are across the industry speaking about these challenges is actually quite refreshing. And then possibly something else that's been a bit of a surprise is the, the element to which some businesses have really jumped on this um, as a marketing strategy, which is kind of crept its way into recruitment trends and that's naturally created some concerns around greenwashing and I think has itself become quite a divisive topic. So I do find that firms have had to define their human capital strategy for ESG and make sure they have a very clear understanding of what they want and, and to get from it uh, so it doesn't risk being lip service. That seems like there's two ends of the spectrum, the, the, the transparency and then the greenwashing. Well, I really hope that this year is the year that we unearth un un some of those greenwashers. 
Um, so how are teams, how are ESG teams being integrated into wider businesses? What has changed? I think the biggest change is, is, is the viewpoint from the business um, and how receptive they are to ESG being no longer this sort of nice to have concept, but driving better outcomes for investors and, and overall profitability. Uh, I think the ESG money flows are, are hard ones to ignore. Um, and as a result, you've seen integration surge within teams, I think, across the market. Um, but I think ESG teams do, on, on your point, kind of operate slightly differently. So some larger businesses have had ESG teams sit quite separately, simply advising the business, and others have had the function squarely within the investment platform itself. Um, and I think those that have had the luxury of sort of better training and education have positioned investment professionals who have come up to speed with these issues as ESG champions within their respective teams. And I don't think any of these approaches are necessarily right or wrong, um, but I do suspect moving forward, um, you know, the, these sort of teams will be front and center of the investment strategy. And that means that hiring those with much better investment sort of stakeholder engagement skills is going to become essential. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things I've really noticed is in the hiring process or interviewing process, the business itself has become much more involved. And I think that's, I get the impression that's going to bring together a better cohesion of ideas as opposed to a conflict of aims. Um, so it's pretty positive. And um, you talked about in the last comment that you wrote for us about the sort of surge in hiring in ESG is similar to the surge in compliance and regulatory roles after the global financial crisis. And this year we've seen lots of um, ESG regulation being put into place or at least kind of consulted on. So is ESG compliance an area asset managers have been interested in? Well, I, I think if it's not already, it will be very soon. Um, it's, it's a ticking time bomb that people leading these departments are clearly concerned about. It's something that I've heard raised multiple times. I think Luckily, there are teams in place within the kind of regulatory compliance setting uh, that are tasked with impact assessments, and it's, it's likely to be those that will be responsible for assessing the implications um, and, and sort of, you know, they'll have a process on, on, on doing business. Um, I think another layer of process and consideration within the business is always going to be problematic and there's going to be people pushing back against that. Um, I think clearly sort of EU taxonomy and SFDR impact all businesses with global operations. It's not just those in certain countries or certain jurisdictions. And I think that's going to require a universal response. So whether that means having a sort of enhanced involvement from existing internal regulatory functions or, or it means drafting regulation specific professionals into the ESG team structure itself, I, th I think time will tell. I don't think, again, similar to how people integrate, there's, a, there's necessarily a right or a wrong, but um, regulation is, is is the next major step that's going to be conjoined with sort of ESG efforts for sure. And finally, what are your predictions for the future trends in ESG recruitment? I think it's going to be a very, very busy area. I mean, I think I did a, a very basic search on, on LinkedIn in their job section, and uh, you'll see that I think in the UK they have around 900 jobs associated with the acronym ESG, and I think in the US this number is edging closer to around 2,000. So and those are all just posted within the last month. So I think while, yes, these jobs operate across the spectrum um, and they're not necessarily sat within ESG teams per se, they are clearly linked. And I think the businesses across the board clearly feel that there is a need to link ESG to many of their internal and external activities. So I think in simple terms, um, there's just not enough people in the market to satisfy the demand that the companies have out there. And, and that is the current state of affairs, if you like. I think. Some have wrongly, in my opinion, uh, discussed the word bubble. Um, I, I don't see that personally. I think the volume of regulation and commitment from firms across the globe, financial and non-financial services businesses, indicates this is the general direction of the market. So I think in the coming years, the firms will be and have been battling for kind of sought after talent in this space. Um, I don't see this changing um, or, or, or lessening in, in, in the coming years. I think demand will remain high and I expect you know with a lot of ESG professionals moving in between competitors over the coming years this will move over time as has been said many occasions not from being it's from being a fringe area to being mainstream and I think ESG will just be the standard format for a lot of investment businesses and it won't be talked about in terms of ESG or growing teams it will just simply be the status quo 
Um, so I think until that happens, there's going to be a lot of movement in the market as a result. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. It's really interesting to get your perspective. Look out for more from Tom in terms of comment pieces on the recruitment trends in ESG, on ESG clarity and our upcoming educational hub, ESG Intelligence.